what time it is give this guy some love he got injured today give some give give some love to omar he he deserves it but that is a three to two overtime victory over the carolina hurricanes and bringing the boston bruins to a brand new uh, nhl record of 12 consecutive home home games games one to start a season wow I was a little bit concerned for the Bruins that not only had we just lost the uh, last uh, our previous game against the against the uh, against the Florida Panthers, so we were down, uh, so uh, we were coming off a loss, not uh, and didn't really look good in, in it, but also this was the Carolina Hurricane. And the last time that we you, you beat the Her- the Carolina Hurricanes in the regular season was 2019 it was 2019 to be fair uh the 20 the 2020 half of the 2019 2020 season it was kind of a kind of fakakta the 2021 uh, 2020 2021 season we didn't really we didn't play them at all in the regular season because the because you know the uh the co- the covid thing and then last year, uh, last year we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. I just love playing a team three times in the regular season and losing and losing by a combined score of sixteen to one. It's my favorite. It's my favorite thing. Also, I was a little bit discombobulated in the, uh, this uh, uh, this for, uh, to start this uh, this game because I wasn't home. I wasn't home for the first uh, step, uh, for the first. Period. I was out doing Black Friday shopping. I got a copy of Pokemon and Scarlet, but uh, I have not really cracked into it uh, so far because I'm making this video right after the uh, right after the Bruins game, and that's sort of when uh, you put everything else on pause and just focus on the Bruins. Yeah. Also, I got a new pair of Vans that I will show you guys in the next episode. So, so basically, what I'm so basically what I'm saying is I didn't see either Stefan Notions or Yasperi Kokaniemi's his goals but what i can tell you is that <clears throat> i was really i was really not impressed with the bruins in the uh in, in play this game there were definitely things to like about it and after the uh, <clears throat> frick after the second period after like halfway through the second period the bruins really started to you know, to get into gear but oh my god the penalties oh the penalties the penalties the penalties the penalties did i mention the penalties have one of the best power, uh, penalty kills in the league, except last game. We uh, except last game, um, we uh we gave up uh, we gave up like two or three goals on the power pull, uh, on the penalty uh, while we were on the penalty kill, and uh, and this game both of Carolina's goals ended up on the uh, ended up uh, while they were on the power play. So uh, yeah, our penalty kill is kind of taking a downturn. I don't th- uh, I think. That it was inevitable. Uh, I thought that uh, the production we were making uh, during uh, during that insane stretch was just uh, indescribably uh, in. It was just completely insane. But at this point, but also at the same time, if you want to not be scored while you hold on while you're shorthanded, maybe you don't go shorthanded. Yes, four of our penalty minutes came off of one. It came off of one penalty from Pasternak. Like, like that was brutal. Oh. and at the same time, and at the same time, um, Carolina had it had the same number of penalty minutes as as we had. We both had twelve penalty minutes this game. There are just two problems that I have with that logic. First of all, it, it, first of all, it implies that twelve of penalty minutes isn't something to be ashamed of. Guys performed six no nos and got uh, and got uh, uh, two of them capitalized on. Five technically, but who cares? I feel like uh, I feel like any attempt to um, to cover up uh, to make an excuse for how 
a little mediocre our penalty kill was this game. Um, would be fine if both goals that Carolina scored were not on the power play. And the team that just got shut out by, by Arizona? What's wrong? Can't be the only one who's who's this ashamed of the uh, of the Bruins play this game. Like, thank God the end of the second period happens where pot, uh, where you know how usually the Bruins will do that thing where they uh, where they move the puck to uh, where to where everywhere that Pasternak isn't to get uh, to just pull the defense that way and then they pass it to Pasternak and he's he's got uh, and he he just has a wide open. In shot lane. Yeah, Pasenak basically does the opposite of that. He draws three three hurricanes all the way to the left side of the ice and is and is just dangles through most of them and then passes it to to David Krejci up the for him to drive up the middle and and shoot and shoot to to close the to close the gap to one against Pyotr Koshekov. Anyway, I know why. I know that Pyotr Kishekov uh, isn't that bad of a goalie, but at the same time, you, but at the same time, you got to be kidding me. We're not, uh, we're not really getting goalied by uh, by Carolina's third string goalie when we have two of the best uh, tendies in the league. But then we get to about seven minutes into the third period, where. Uh, where Brett Pesci is just right up the is just right up the gut, uh, trying his best to put it past uh, Linus Olmark. Uh, Olmark saves it. Uh, he's uh, he's a little bit uh, pushed up uh, against everyone, and and he falls down. And so does Matt Grozik behind him. Pesci has the puck again, and he's and he shoots it. Uh, he shoots it. Olmark uh, just barely. He gets a glove on it and uh, to uh, to redirect it, and Connor Clifton just falls on uh, on Allmark's Eric's head. Play stops because Allmark has stopped. Allmark is just on the ground. He is uh, he's not moving. He bangs his he bangs his, his fist on the ice a few times because he knows that he's hurt, and. Uh, and we're like, oh, great! We're down, uh, we're down one with uh, with less than fifteen minutes to go. Oh, sure, we have time, but we also have Swayman in that. And and look, we love Swayman. We love Swayman in this house. We absolutely, uh, we absolutely adore Jeremy Swayman in this house. Plus, you know, uh, after all, he is free. He's this guy right here. This man right here mm. on that towel. We love Jeremy Swayman in this house. He has like a sub 900 save percentage in, in so far that in the season and a, a and a goals against average of, of over three. That's not good. That's not good. I mean, for once, with Swayman had a pretty good game, had a pretty good uh, last. Uh, last little bit. Uh, sure, uh, sure. We played the puck a lot better than uh, than Carolina did. We uh, we were forcing it in their end a lot. We were uh, that was when Carolina was starting to take a little, a few more penalties, is uh, including a hilariously stupid, uh, uh, freaking delay of game penalty at the uh, at the end of the third after uh, the uh, after Krejci with the second with his second goal of the game tying it up at two. Oh. Oh, Carolina took, uh, Bruins took the dumber penalties. Carolina took the more, actually, I guess Carolina didn't take the more costly penalties because we also, because only one of our goals was on the power play. They had two goals on the power play. Speaking of which, let's talk about goal. Let's talk about the goal on the power play that the Bruins scored, shall we? Into overtime we, into overtime we go. Oh, well, Andre Svech, uh, the, uh, what is it? The Carolina Hurricanes switch uh, switch off way too hastily and and end up getting called for a too many men on the ice pal- uh, penalty served by Andre Svechnikov. Of uh, and uh, and Marshand decides he wants to take it back to uh, how it usually is, where uh, everybody else is uh, is floating the puck 
And, and Pasternak's just right there in the face-off circle, waiting for his time to strike. Marshan's got them all lined up, passes to the circle to uh, Pasternak. Pasternak, uh, Pasternak scores. Uh, is up. Uh, Pasternak uh, scores because uh, Kashekov pushes a little bit too hard uh, to the post, uh, to the near post. Pasta's, Pasta's shot to the far post. That ends the game, 3-2. This game really felt like a combination of two narratives. Uh, a combination of two narratives that we need to fulfill, uh, that uh, that are going into this gauntlet. First off, this is not going to be easy. Canes let us know, Canes let us know pretty well uh, pretty well what we were up against. And they, uh, they gave us what for a few, uh, a few times. And it was uh, it was frustrating to play again. But but the second narrative is that this team can is that this team has the has what it takes to do it. Could this game have been as difficult as it was? No, this game should not have been difficult. The Bruins made it difficult, but we were able to over. But we were able to overcome that. So I think I think the main takeaway from this game is that. For as much as we can get in our own way, we also have the we also have the strength and the willpower to get out of our own way to to progress past what uh, the to set fire to the bed that we've made for ourselves. I guess I don't know. I don't I don't know what these metaphors. Mean. You know what else I don't know? I also don't know how to end a video. So. Uh... Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for watching this edition of Into the Den. And click like if you like. Click subscribe if you really like. Up there is my most recent video. Down below is my twitch.tv. Check me out at twitch.tv forward slash 100 underscore Bex, B-E-C-S. Uh, next game is against it's the Colorado Avalanche on, uh, on a... Uh, Wait, frick, it's not against the Avalanche, is it? I am stupid. Uh, it's against the it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're, we're going against the Lightning again. Then and uh that is go that is going to be on the 29th. And I will see you guys then. Take care.